In this video, I'm just going to go through and show some examples of how you might use stored paths. So, first of all, let's start with the scenario that we showed in the previous example, which is simply having a train stuck in a siding, and there's an oncoming train. So let's make this eastbound. Okay, so we've got our westbound in the siding here. Eastbound is oncoming. So as we saw in the previous example, before this train gets here, let's first let's just clear a route here for our eastbound. So the eastbound has a clear path through on the main. Our westbound is in the siding and it's pink because it needs the dispatcher's attention. So now we're going to store a path for this train. And so what we'll do is we'll create a path that starts at the train by right-clicking on the train to turn it white. We'll just pick a block up here past Mojave, right-click on that block, there's our path. So we're going to store this by left-clicking to designate a trigger block. And we want this path to be triggered when our oncoming train hits the main at Bissell. So I'm going to left-click the block here at Bissell. This will store that path. And as we saw in the previous example, when I let this run, let's just turn auto-spawning off for now. So we'll leave the time multiplier nice and high at 15. I'll start that. So here comes our oncoming train, and when that train hits the main at Bissell, that will hit our trigger block, that will trigger that path, and our train in the siding at Bissell will then be cleared to keep heading north. So just waiting for the switch to clear. And there we go. So, now let's try that again, but this time, stop, let's create those trains again, but now let's go a little bit earlier in time. So this time, our westbound hasn't actually arrived yet. So here's our eastbound. So we have a westbound that's going to go in the siding, just like before. We've got our eastbound that's oncoming. So as the dispatcher, we know we're going to line this into the siding. So we'll just clear the path immediately. So we'll right-click on the train, right-click on the siding, left-click on the train, and then we'll clear that path into the siding. We'll do the same for this guy. Right-click, right-click, left-click. And so there's our meet that's been set up. So if we let that run, And we'll stop this as soon as this train hits the siding. Okay, let's stop that there. So notice that this has turned pink. So in addition to what we did previously, which was lining this guy out, just set a path there somewhere north of Mojave, designate the main at Bissell has our trigger, just as before. But because we're actually, this is a little earlier in time, we can now also line this guy immediately by left-clicking on the train here, straight through this siding. Uh, sorry, straight through the main. And notice here that the interlocking here will keep flashing. So, as a dispatcher, when something turns pink, that needs that means it needs your attention. But when you have a train going into a siding and it turns pink, not only does that train need your attention, but the oncoming train needs your attention as well. So you can store a path for the train that turned pink out of the siding, designate the main as the trigger, but you can also use that point in time as the opportunity to clear a route for the oncoming train as well. And when that happens, we'll start that, that will keep going into the siding. And by doing that, neither train will end up waiting for the dispatcher's attention. So as soon as that interlocking is clear here, this will now automatically change. This has triggered our path, so the interlocking at the other end of the siding is now waiting to change as well. And so now we just had a meet. Neither train ended up waiting for the dispatcher. The dispatcher was able to line everything up well ahead of time. So let's try that again. But this time, we're going to use stored paths for both trains. So, 
Let's drop that to red. So we have our train over here. It's going to be westbound. Got another train over here. Let's stop that. Put this a little further out. Let's just make this eastbound. So we're going to do just like before. We're going to route this guy into the siding. Left click on the train. To right click. Right click. Left click to line that guy into the main. This time we're going to use stored paths for both trains. And so the way this works is this guy is going to continue on through, but this path cannot be active until our oncoming train enters the siding. So we'll left click on the siding to designate that as a trigger. Now when this enters the siding, this path straight through the main will be cleared. This guy here is going to go through the siding, so we right click on the train, right click on the siding, and then it's going to come out the other side. So we'll right click out here, let's just keep going north of Mojave again, and we want this path to be executed when the other train hits the main. So we'll left click on the main here to designate that as a trigger. So we've now got two paths and if we show our paths button here you can see the paths actually overlap in a lot of these blocks. So we'll just go through them one by one by clicking on the individual trains and you can see that this guy has the orange arrows going through the siding and the orange circle that designates the trigger block for this path on the main. This guy goes through the main, you can see the arrow through the main there, and the trigger will be the siding. And the reason that this works is that as a train moves, any element that is part of the stored path that is but behind the train gets dropped. So if I let this go, we start those moving, we designate our paths, you'll notice that as they move, the blocks behind them are no longer part of this train's path. And the same on this side when he jumps over. This block behind is no longer part of the path. So now we have two trains. We lined them into the siding and into the main and then out the other side before either train actually arrived. And there we go. Both paths have now been triggered. And as soon as both interlockings are clear, each train can continue on its way. So let's just do that again one more time. Okay, let's pick silt this time. So we got a train going this way, westbound at Boron, eastbound at Edwards. Okay. So this guy's going to get there first, so let's line him into the siding at silt. This guy onto the main. Now we're going to line this guy through the siding and out the other side. Our trigger will be the main. This guy will go through the main and the trigger will be the siding. And so we can line up a meet and it will happen automatically without any interaction from the dispatcher. And if this was running in real time rather than at a 15 times multiplier, we could have lined this up half an hour beforehand and then gone for a coffee. And there we go. So that's one of the simplest uses of paths to line up meets. So now we're going to look at a second example. This time we're going to have one train overtake another train and we're going to use stored paths to automate the whole thing. So for the setup here, I'm going to create a train here. I want a nice slow manifest train. Make a westbound and let's create a westbound intermodal train. They can do 70 in this region. And we'll have the intermodal overtake the manifest at Jim Gray. So if we go back to the dispatcher app, the first thing obviously is we're going to create the paths that the trains are going to follow. This one's going to go into the siding, this one is going to go through Hinkley and it's following the manifest train. So the way we're going to do this is the first train is going to go into the siding at Jim Gray and the second train is going to have a stored path that continues right on by down the main at Jim Gray. Now this path we don't want to happen until the first train gets into Jim Gray. So I'm going to left click on the block at the siding at Jim Gray to designate that as our trigger. So we now have 
this train going into the siding at Jim Gray, and as soon as it hits that block in the siding at Jim Gray, this train will be able to continue straight on through. So now, our first train, we want to create a stored path that will allow it to exit Jim Gray. So we'll right click on that train, we know it's going to go through Jim Gray, so we have to create a path that does that. And then it's going to go out the other side, and now for our trigger block, we don't want this path to execute until the stack train gets all the way past Jim Gray. So I'm going to pick this block here to the west of Jim Gray, left click on that to designate that as the trigger. So now if we look at our two stored paths, we've got our stack train going straight through Jim, Jim Gray and this path will execute when our trigger block here in the siding at Jim Gray is hit. And this train is going to go through Jim Gray and out the other side and this path will trigger when this block to the west of Jim Gray gets hit by our intermodal train. So let's disable auto spawn. We'll leave it on a 15 times multiplier so it's nice and quick. Quick. Hit the start button there to get our trains moving. And we'll just watch what happens. So our first train here is already lined into the siding, so soon this will begin to slow down to enter the siding at Jim Gray. Our intermodal train behind it can do 70 miles an hour in this area, so it's rapidly catching up. And there's the first train slowing down for the siding. Okay, so that has hit the siding block that's triggered the path that was associated with our stack train and this train now as soon as that interlocking is clear and that switch finishes changing will be able to go all the way through past Mojave. And there we go. And now when our stack train gets past Jim Gray and hits our second trigger block over to the west here that will automatically line the route out of Jim Gray siding for our manifest train. And there we go. If this was running in real time, we could have set that up 20 to 30 minutes beforehand, then completely ignored it, and that overtaking maneuver would have happened automatically. Let's just do that one more time. So let's pick, let's pick something up here at Edwards. So let's create our slow manifest train. Somewhere behind it, our westbound intermodal train. Stop that for now. So let's have these guys overtake at Edwards. So first, line this guy into the siding now we need to create our two stored paths to get this guy back out of the siding and this guy passed on the main at Edwards. It doesn't matter which order you create the paths in, all that matters is which order they execute in. And execution is controlled by when trains hit trigger blocks. So we can create this one first through the siding, we'll trigger this path when the other train gets past Edwards and into this first block here to the west side. And our stack train is just going to continue on through and this will be OK to execute once the first train gets into the siding at Edwards. So let's run that and watch that happen again. Uh, need to clear this guy as well. So once again, our first train is about to enter the siding. It hits our trigger block for the trailing train. And 
there's our clear out for the trailing train to continue down the main at Edwards. And once he gets by, there's the trigger for the second stored path. So it takes up to 10 real-time seconds for the switches to throw. And so when you're running at a 15 times multiplier, that 10 real-time seconds becomes a few minutes. So obviously the gap between these trains would be closer if it was running at one-to-one -one time. So there's an example of how to use stored paths to have one train overtake another train.